morning, everybody. I'm Bear from the internet. You know that. That's why you're here. If you're new here, don't be a freaking schlub. Subscribe. Ring the little bell icon. That way YouTube will pretend to notify you when we go live and drop new videos. If you're not new here, you know what to do. Share this show with people that you love. And if you don't love anybody, at least share the show with somebody that you like. And if you don't like anybody, you should probably work on you, buddy. The problem is probably looking at you in the mirror. It's not the world. It's you. Bear Independent Brief, 23 December 22. It's cold. The end. Have a blessed day, everybody. Shalom. Just kidding. President Zelensky's visit and speech to Congress is being hailed as history-making at uh, the news media. Shut the F up, big channels. It's historical. It's so brave. What a great leader. Shut up. Just shut up. Being hailed as history-making, and the media is gushing over it with articles like Zelensky wows Washington with inspiring address to Congress, and Zelensky recalled us to ourselves. His speech invoked World War II when he said, quote, just like the brave American soldiers which held their lines and fought back Hitler's forces during the Christmas of 1944, brave Ukrainian soldiers were doing the same to Putin's forces this Christmas, end quote. And saying that aiding Ukraine was not charity, but, quote, an investment in the global security and democracy, end quote. So that, you know, you know how there's days where like, uh, there's days that you care and there's days that you don't. I'm not saying this stuff isn't important. I'm totally saying I just don't care today. You know what I mean? It's just like, eh, yep. Dog and pony show. We all know it's a dog and pony show. We all know that president Volodymyr Zelensky didn't write his speech, just like Biden doesn't write his speeches. Well, the speech was probably leaked to all these media outlets so they could prepare their articles before the speech was even given. There's six, six dudes that control 98% of the world's media companies. Six, not five, not seven, six of them. They control 98% of the world's media companies. Internet news, written news, uh, television, radio, podcast, six. Pretty sure they knew what they were going to talk about before Zelensky knew what he was going to talk about, right? Super surprised. Um, garbage. It's, it's just garbage. It's just dog and pony show so that, uh, hey, we need some more money to continue to prosecute this war in Ukraine. Cool. You know, and the whole comparing Ukrainian soldiers to American soldiers in World War II. Ah, remember... Remember, we're, we're just like you. Let's humanize this situation. Biden promised the continued support of the United States, and the Kremlin said that the support would merely prolong the suffering of the Ukrainian people. Um, so one would think like, well, Biden doesn't have the authority to promise that money. That's Congress's job. Congress holds the purse strings, right? Yeah, we're going to talk about the purse here in a moment. They're just all a bunch of freaking scumbags, man. Like, they're just, nobody does their job. Nobody, look at the approval ratings of Biden and Congress in general. This is why, I guess we're just a little salty today, right? This is why they want to disarm you. Because um, at some point, if you were an entrenched bureaucracy with a 12% approval rating and your constituency was the most well-armed group of people on the face of the earth in the history of the earth, you might think it was a good idea to take away that constituency's ability to project force as well. Just throwing that out there because uh, these boys and girls are terrible at their jobs if their job is to represent, it, represent you. Not in this democracy, right? An investment in global security and democracy you guys have all the democracy you want over there. We're not a democracy. By the way, you notice the new uh, banner up here? No peasant shit. That's right. No peasant shit. 
You will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Exodus 19, verse 6. No peasant shit, right? Unless you're, you know, a, an elected representative, in which case, yeah, objectify everybody. Make all the peasants you want. So Biden promised his continued support. Oh, well, eh, not the president's job, Congress's job. Well, Congress sucks shit, too. And the Kremlin said that the support would merely prolong the suffering of the Ukrainian people. Spokesperson Dmitry Peskov noted that neither Biden nor the Zelensky appeared to have, quote, a willingness to listen to Russia's concerns, end quote, and that there was no real calls for peace. Putin said, one way or another, all armed conflicts end with talks. The sooner this understanding comes to those who oppose us, the better. We never rejected the talks, end quote. I know, right? And you know what's really interesting to me as well? Um, it, it's fascinating from an, you know, an amateur study of human beings angle. The We know that Biden's a scumbag. We know that Zelensky's a scumbag. Which, so kind of like the Hegelian dialectic thesis, antithesis, synthesis, right? And forgive me for like not being fully awake right now, because I'm definitely not. So just bear with me for a moment. Um, so you end up with, we know Biden's a scumbag, and we know Zelensky's his friend, because the Democrats are in the Ukraine perpetuating a war and F checks and money. Yeah, we know all that, right? Okay. So because they're scumbags, doesn't make Vladimir Putin any less of a scumbag. But it's amazing to me how many people, especially in the prepper and conspiracy theorist uh, movements, are like, Putin's the good guy. Is he? I don't think any of them are good guys, right? Like, none of them are good guys. And they don't care about you one iota. Putin doesn't care about you. Zelensky doesn't care about you. Biden definitely doesn't care about you. Why did you even pick a side in this? As if your, your support for Putin or Zelensky or Biden is going to actually do something about this, right? Like it really matters to them. No, it's it's bread and circuses. This whole thing is just a big show, right? Putin said this, and Zelensky said that, and then Biden responded with this. <gasps> oh, buy, buy more potassium iodate. I need another Mira safety, you know, uh, gas mask. I should probably buy three more guns in case the world ends. Oh, my God, did you see? Shut up. No peasant shit. Long-term strategies. Right? Don't be... Don't be sucked into the Hegelian dialectic. Zelensky's a bad guy. Putin must be a good guy. No, they're all bad guys. They're all bad guys. They don't give a single solitary shit about you, and you shouldn't care about them either. They're all bad guys. But they're bad guys with nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. Likelihood of those things being used, relatively low. What are you going to do if they are used? Just honest question for the prepper community. What's your plan if nuclear weapons fall from the sky? And if the answer is, I don't have one, then what do you even care? See what I mean? This whole thing has just become one big giant circle jerk. And it's too cold for me to care. White House spokesperson John Kirby said that Putin has shown absolutely zero indication that he's willing to negotiate an end of the war. Quote, everything he is doing on the ground and in the air bespeaks a man who wants to continue to visit violence upon the Ukrainian people. Meanwhile, just this Wednesday, Russia's leaders have stated their commitment to strengthening its military force to achieve its goals in Ukraine. Of course. Likewise, Zelensky took a harder line than President Biden, saying there can't be any just peace in a war that was imposed on us. Buddy, you were installed by alphabet soup agencies belonging to the United States of America in a coup d'etat that predates the war in Ukraine between Russia and NATO. So it wasn't just this war didn't just happen. 
It, it wasn't Russia didn't decide January 24th, 2022. You know what? That's it. We've had enough. It didn't just happen. <gasps> oh my gosh, they invaded. Does anybody remember the half a year, six to nine month buildup of Russian BTGs, battalion tactical groups on the border of Ukraine with in Russia and Belarus? I remember 150,000 troops and they're like, nah, they're not going to invade. No, it's never. Oh, oh my gosh, they invaded. <gasps> yeah. Our democracy. Oh, my democracy. Shut up. There can't be any just war in a war that was imposed on us. Mm hmm. Um, spooky guys from the United States of America have been in Ukraine doing spooky guy stuff for a decade. How do you think Zelensky got elected? Why do you think Zelensky got elected? This whole Russian collusion thing with the Clintons, Arkansas's favorite political dynasty. And um, Trump with Russian collusion. Yeah. Point the finger at Trump saying that he's a bad guy doing this stuff in Russia so or with Russia so that if it blows up during Trump's presidency. Oh, look, see, we told you Russian collusion, even though this the groundwork for this was laid during the uh, Obama administration. Right. Eh. Do the political elites suck? They're terrible. They're horrendous. Does it change what you need to do today? No, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. You need to execute with righteous authority within the purview that has been given to you by the creator of the universe to steward the people that you've been blessed with, to provide, protect, and bless the people within your care, to execute on the opportunities that are presented to you so you can be as strong as possible where you're at, so you can perpetuate normalcy for the people that you love. The end. And the implied task with perpetuate normalcy is establish normalcy. Because a lot of people are out here trying to prep for the end of the world to maintain normalcy for you know the people that they love, and they don't have normalcy now. This gets back to your 90% context. Which is more likely, that you have to earn a paycheck and take care of people that you love, or that warheads fall on your face today? My guess is... Groceries, gasoline, rent, Netflix, you know, shoes, more likely. My guess is retirement at some point, more likely. Definitely vehicle repairs, maybe college tuition or vocational school, trade school, right? more likely than, oh no, the bombs are falling again. You know, and if brief aside of the brief aside, you read this book right here, this one right here, the user manual for people, um, we are not given to a spirit of fear. Another news flash: everybody dies. Everybody dies. Everybody within the sound of my voice dies. There's two people that didn't, Elijah and Enoch. Even Yeshua died. He just didn't stay dead. Everybody dies. You don't get out of this shit alive. Nobody gets out of this shit alive. It's just some people stay dead. Some people don't. So, yeah, you should mitigate risk. You should mitigate pain. You should be able to provide an adequate, adequate covering for the people that you've been blessed with, the steward, regardless of what the world might throw at you, a.k.a. maintaining normalcy for the people that you love by being prepared. But the implied task is established normalcy. And if your normalcy is getting your heart rate up and, ah, did you see what Zelensky said with Biden at the White House? Ah, that's not normal. You're doing yourself and everybody around you a disservice. Like, it's too cold to care. I don't care. Uh, the Senate passed a huge $1.7 trillion spending bill for both emergency aid to Ukraine. Yeah, remember, see, because they're scumbags, too. And U.S. federal agency operations, ATF, got a 14% budget increase. There's a bunch of uh, sneaky, sneaky uh, gun control bill stuff in there. Why? Because 
they figured out uh, 100 years ago they could vote themselves uh, raises and they could vote away your rights and people just take it. But bear, when are people going to rise up and take this country back? Um, well, you can't win a fight with your own clock. You're going to take the country back? Sounds good. Your discipline and your PT are shit. Your shock groups are shit. You don't have any friends to go operate operationally like an operator with. And you're going to rise up and take the country back? I wish you the best of luck. Uh, body bags. You can get them at refugemedical.com. You're going to need them if that's your plan. ba ba da ba da The Senate passed a huge $1.7 trillion spending bill. It's just taxpayer money, right? The House is expected to also pass the measure before Friday today, averting a shutdown. Uh, which they're going to sneak in a couple days before, you know, uh, two days after the technical winter solstice, two days before the observation of the winter solstice, Saturnalia, the pagans called, they want their holiday back. Uh, The bill contains an additional $341 million for the Capitol Police Buildings grounds, the Capitol Police Buildings grounds and security, specifically because of the security concerns after the events on January 6th. (gasps) Some people walked around in here without our permission. Oops, we also let them in. Oops, we also are the ones that killed the American people, not the other way around. Oops. And it also provides $2 million for off-campus security for members of Congress, quote, in response to evolving and growing threats, end quote. $2 million is not a lot of money for off-campus security. Uh, My guess is that's probably a QRF team that's going to be staffed up. $2 million is not a lot of money. Like, not a lot of money. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. Maybe. Maybe not. Mm, lost my chat. Oh, well. Uh, currently, immigrants are flocking to the border as the awaited verdict on Title 42 looms near. The attorney general from 19 separate states have warned the Supreme Court about the imminent worsening, worsening of the border crisis should the Trump era policy be allowed to end. All right, so I feel two ways about this. And the first is having worked in South Texas doing power construction. I met these people who are crossing illegally into the United States of America. I've met them face to face and they're people, women and children, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, women and children. And from a humanity standpoint, a one-on-one person to person standpoint, um, they're leaving a really shitty situation to try and get to a better one. On the other hand, A line in the sand is a line in the sand. Let's say you're Governor Abbott down in Texas or, you know, governor of Arizona or wherever, right? And you say, no more. Not one more inch. Not happening. And people start crossing that line and you open up with twin 50s, overlapping fields of fire. Brrrrat, 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 brrrrat. Holy shit, there's piles of corpses everywhere. Who wants to keep walking across the border? Well, that truck that was filled with people that were trying to infiltrate the border went overland instead of going through the checkpoint. Mm. What happened to that? Carl Gustav, I don't know. See what I mean? Mark 18, light it up. Boom, 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 boom. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, shit. That truck got turned into Swiss cheese. So, again, politicians, right? Like, you either believe what you say or you don't. Like, not one more person is going to cross this border. Yeah, sir, but they're women and children. Okay, yeah, that's, that's part of the problem for sure. That's part of the problem. And I'm not saying it's the right thing or the wrong thing. I'm just saying, like, if you say, that's it, the border's closed, you'll cause an international incident. Okay, we'll just let 18,000 people a day into our country. No big deal. It's fine. No big deal, right? So uh, Title 42, uh, Supreme Court 
is allowing for last minute arguments from both the Biden administration and the 19 states that are asking for Title 42 to remain in place. Due to the historic amount of illegal crossings, Texas Governor Abbott has actually declared an invasion. Then act like it, bro. Aerial assets, imaging, recon elements, assault forces, pinch points, lines of drift. If it's an invasion, do counter-invasion ops. If it's not, shut the F up. So many individuals and communities are already bracing for the massive tidal wave of undocumented people should the government end Title 42, from Texas ranchers to local businesses in Arizona to southern nonprofit organizations. Um, I was talking on Patreon last night, the Patreon, uh, what used to be Thirsty Thursday that's now an exclusive live stream on Patreon because there's uh, zero assholes on Patreon. It's a much more chill live stream. And I was talking about, you know, because people all the time are like, Barry, you should be president. I'm like, I don't know if you guys are ready for that. Not one more inch. Like, if you say it, that's it. But, but the women and children. How many rider rental trucks you got to blow up right on the line of the border? before people quit driving across it. Put a couple big signs right at the border that just says bird food. Well, that is calloused and uncalled for and unchristian of you. I'm not a Christian. I'm a follower of Messiah. The shit that I do is biblical. Yeah, I said that out loud two days before Christmas. You're welcome. Be not conformed to the nations. Roger that. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Roger that. Do not add to or take away from the word of this law. Roger that. He who adds to or takes away from the words of this prophecy shall have the plagues of this prophecy added to him or have his name taken away from the book of life. Roger that. We need a wall, like in World War Z. Nope. No walls. No walls. I've seen the wall in Arizona. 700-mile wall, your taxpayer dollars spent close to a billion dollars on it. Every mile. So in a mile, there's 5,280 feet, right? So there's 5,000 foot of wall, and then there's 280 feet of no wall. Then 5,000 foot of wall, then 280 foot of no wall. You know why that was done? So that the government could say, we put up 700 miles of border fence in Arizona. Sure did. But also, people and goods and services can continue to flow through the holes every mile in the wall. Pointless. That's what you get when you get the government doing stuff on your behalf. You got a 700 mile border wall, border fence. Good job. There's 700 holes in it too. Spaced perfectly every 5,000 feet. Yeah, coincidence. Worst case scenario, you walk up on the wall, just go left or right. Worst case scenario, you're a half a mile from an opening. No biggie. Five versus one said, LOL, that's the most retarded thing. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So I don't know. Maybe when it comes to the border, like, all right, Governor Abbott, it's an invasion. Act like it. Texas state militia. Yeah. I know a lot of TSM guys. Unimpressed. If you're on Patreon, you got links to this bullshit. If you're not on Patreon, you don't. A little bit of bonus intel. Uh, food bank update, quote, I was unable to assist it with November and therefore have no firsthand accounts. People I trust tell me over 400 families helped and very thin rations. December saw 362 families given three to four days of food, no meat products. The only protein source was milk, less than half the normal amount of fresh produce. All other food was condiments, seasoning and junk food, high in fake sugars. 
Obviously, if someone is hungry, some calories are better than no calories. I just don't think vegetable bouillon cubes and breakfast pastries, pastries will get most people very far. The regional distribution center is unable to acquire eggs or poultry. This time of year, we expect to have unused turkeys from Thanksgiving. It's possible the donated deer makes it into the mix by December, but none showed up at the food bank this cycle. If none shows up in January, that will be alarming. The last six months or so have been telling as food quantities have gone down and families served have been relatively rising. The regional food bank has been encouraging us to spread the food quantities thinner and hopefully avoid turning people away empty handed. It wasn't that long ago when people were getting 10 to 14 days worth of quality groceries and food was always left over. This month, no one was turned away and we operated for three hours. Had we not reviewed and revised our SOPs regarding speed and job distribution, we would have likely finished in under two hours. <clears throat> the additional time helps the people inside adjust food quantities. Volunteers have returned to a normal level as compared to most months. However, December is usually high for volunteers. You could argue that we were low for an average December. Our SOPs continue to improve. We were able to bless a woman by replacing the dead battery in her car. Carrying a basic toolkit helped a lot on this one. We also had our first police encounter in years because of a fender bender in the parking lot. So what this uh, person is saying, writing in, is, hey, listen, um, the food bank where our mag works, uh, things are getting more and more dire. People used to get... Um, you know, 10 to 14 days worth of food. Uh, now they're getting three to four days worth of food, no meat, very little fresh produce. And the air quote food that they're getting is basically junk food. Uh, silver lining. So this happened last week. I was out doing the things and took some cash out of the bank. I was wearing a new coat and put $1,000 in a bank envelope in the inside pocket to do a couple of errands. At the second stop, I went to get some money and it turns out that the inside pocket was not a pocket and the money was gone. I searched for it, left my name and number at the first stop, but no luck finding it. I prayed that whoever found it would put it to good use and moved on. The next morning, I got a call and someone found it and returned every penny. I tried to give them a couple hundred to say thank you, but they refused to take it. They said donate it to charity. Driving home, the Lord put it on my heart, the perfect place to send it. So later, I will be sending it to Grindstone. God is good. Be well, be blessed, stay safe, and thank you for all you do. Praise Yah. That's the brief for today. I realize it's uh, probably a little a little less uh, puppy dogs and unicorns than it normally is sometimes. But uh, this is what you got today. You guys know the drill. You know how to support the show. If uh, you're one of those people that jumps off when it's time to support how time to talk about how to support the show, GTFO, bro, get out of here. Everybody else, Refuge Medical, um, Crash Kit, Pelican Case, Bear Fact Insert, Trauma Medicine, everything from broken bones to, uh, I got splinters, Crash Kit, uh, designed for a brother of ours who does Baja racing in the desert, 1,000 miles, 140 miles an hour, windproof, waterproof, dustproof, dirtproof, sandproof. The crash kit. If it's good enough for a Baja racing truck, it's probably good enough for your Jeep or your minivan. It also makes a really good kit for boats, you know, maritime ops. So crash kit is being featured today. The bear fact is back in stock. I know a lot of y'all been emailing asking, yo, dude, what's up? When's the bear fact going to be back in stock? Bear fact is back in stock. Refugemedical.com. Free shipping this entire month. Your FSA and HSA expires in eight days. So don't be dumb. Use it before you lose it. Um, and yeah, that's it. Refuge Medical. Um, go there. Buy a kit. Don't die. Refuge Training. Go there. Buy training. Go to class. Learn how to not die. That's the whole point of Refuge Training. It would be incredibly um, lax in our responsibilities for us to provide the best first aid kits on the planet and to not provide the best training on the planet so that you would know how to actually not die. So I'd strongly recommend. And if, even if you're like, Oh, we get this question all the time. I was combat lifesaver qualified. I was an EMT. I was a paramedic. I'm a trauma doctor. I really need to come to class. Hey buddy, if you're asking the question, you should probably come to class. 
I've had uh, 18 Delta Special Forces medics take the class and say, shit, dude, that was awesome. I, I relearned some things that I didn't know that I had forgotten. Yeah. How's that for high praise? Right. So, yeah, you know, up to you. You know, if you if you're as good as you think you need to be on things like that, then go for it. So. Morning. Aha. Um, yeah, so refugetraining.com. Unless, you know, you just enjoy bleeding out, dying. That's fine. It's up to you. Completely up to you. You do you. This is America, our democracy. Yeah, representative republic. Grindstone Ministries, end of year giving. If uh, you like to give stuff and if you acknowledge that it's the end of the year, then maybe prayerfully consider Grindstone Ministries where we actually go do shit. We just don't sit around and talk about it. Um, there's a link in the description. Also, Caleb House, if you want to buy a hoodie, a long sleeve, or a t-shirt, you can get a very expensive, unapologetically, t-shirt, long sleeve, or hoodie because anti-human trafficking is very expensive. And of course, you can get the Facts Not Feeling shirt from our brother Saw, produced by Sanctified Supply Co. Portion of the proceeds go to support the construction of Caleb House. And there's a link in the description. All There's links to all this shit in the description. Um, that's a cool story, man. Uh, I'm out. I gotta go feed sheep. It's cold. Carl Erickson said your classes are legit, and he's a Green Beret medic and sniper. Yeah, I love Carl. Carl's awesome. Tactical rifleman. They are legit. He's right. His classes are legit as well. But when it comes to doing medical stuff, you know, it's it's challenging, right? Because, like, shamelessly self-promoting every day gets old. It's like just effing come to class. And then you can shamelessly promote for me because you will have come to class and realized, hot damn. Bear was 100% accurate when he said this is a really good class. Hmm. Hmm. Or, hot damn, the bear fact actually works. I guess it really did save 57 people's lives in the last three years. Wow, that shit's incredible. I had no idea. As if I just say these things for fun, you know. I'll end with this. Um, there's a lot of companies that are going out of business right now. There's a lot of biz companies that are going out of business in 2023. Across the spectrum, but there's definitely a handful in the medical community, first aid kit community, definitely going out of business. Um, and I'm not going to tell you who they are because that's their business, not mine. But we might talk about it after it happens and their names you would recognize. Yeah. So two things are going to happen when that happens. One, Refuge will take a portion of their market share because we don't operate in debt. Not one dime. No peasant shit. Not one dime in debt. When we buy stuff, we buy it with our money. When we pay bills, we pay it with our money. So we'll continue to grab market share, which is good. It's good. It's a strategy. The other thing is more and more price point, cheap Chinese bullshit kits and bad trainings are going to pop up because of that, because there'll be more space in the market. And people will think, well, this name brand company couldn't stay in business selling a kit for $200 or $300. Um, I guess, you know, like, how could I sell a kit for $200 or $300? I guess we need a $70 kit. No, the hell you don't. You're better off not spending any money at all than buying a $70 kit. That shit's stupid. Like, the super tactical Chinese nylon tear-open pouch with 35-piece IFAC kit. Mm, no, garbage. You got 70 bucks to spend? Let's see. What do I got? Soft tea tourniquet, back pocket. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Look, it's worn. 
because I wear it every day. Soft tea tourniquet. Sea locks. This is what's on me. EDC. S mark bandage. And a set of shoes. Okay. Wearing it right now in executive mode. And I've got massive bleeding covered. Airway respiratory. There's a stomp bag right there. So I could do airway respiratory stuff. And my truck's right there that has a stomp bag on it. And backboards and all the other cool guy shit. You're better off getting a good tourniquet and some gauze and a pressure bandage for 70 bucks and buying some cheap Chinese bullshit. For real. You got a fanny pack on. Nope. No fanny pack. So, <clears throat> anyway, I don't know why I'm salty this morning, other than it's too cold to carry. I do appreciate y'all. Y'all have a blessed day. Shalom.